on the Minnesota Twins. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the uh, Metrodome from here in Minneapolis. I'm Bill White, along with Spencer Ross and for Phil Rizzuto. And Spencer, tonight the Yankees a plus. The uh, Toronto uh, Blue Jays have lost. The Yankees have gained a half game without even playing. Okay, we were talking earlier, so that ties them in the loss column. And you said, well, it is a little bit early to start thinking about that, but that, that is an interesting aspect with Toronto losing today, both the Yankees and the Blue Jays with 37 losses. And... A fellow named Guidry pitches tonight, and he hasn't had too many of those losses as of late. Well, Ron Guidry's won 12 and lost three, and he's won 11 straight, looking for victory number 12. Now, you've seen Ron pitch for years uh, with this Yankee ball club. Uh, he's had a better fastball in the past. Have you ever seen him with such pinpoint control? Well, we've, we've mentioned before that Guidry has learned how to pitch. Uh, Ron, before, he had the good fastball that moved, and he had the great slider that went down. Well, he lost that a couple of years ago. I think Ron tried to strike out too many people. We're talking about him today, and he's really made a great transition. Uh, he's changing speeds. He can throw a little curveball now, and he can also, once in a while, reach back and spot that fastball and get up there about 90 miles an hour. But he has become an excellent pitcher. He's made a great transition. And as he has said, when, when you're throwing 95, and that's always come a 95, it's really not much different if you throw a 90 and they're expecting a lot less because relatively, it's just as fast, so to speak. Well, we mentioned one game, Spencer. You and I were talking about mm -hmm. Ron Gidger when he was pitching. He went out with really nothing. Can't see. Yet he was able to finesse the Royals and win a ball game, and that's pitching. Well, Gidry, uh, as we said, has now won 11 consecutive games. Interesting against this Minnesota team. He's 15 and 4 lifetime. Ken Schramm will pitch for Minnesota tonight, and the Yankees bombed around last time. Schramm has two of those victories against him. So it'll be Gidry and Ken Schramm. We'll be back with more right after this. The Yankees, uh, their lineup will have Ricky Henderson leading off and playing center field. Ken Griffey batting second and playing left. Don Mattingly at first base. Dave Winfield batting fourth and playing right field. Ron Hassey catching and batting fifth. Batting sixth, the designated hitter, Don Baylor. Willie Randolph will bat second. Mike uh, will bat seventh and play second. Mike Pallarulo will play third base. Bobby Meacham at shortstop for the Yankees. For the home team, the uh, Minnesota Twins, they'll have Kirby Puckett leading off and playing center field. Ron Washington will play second base and bat second. Dave Engel, the designated hitter. Tom Brunanski out and right. Gary Gaietti playing third base. Tim Laudner catching. Dave Meyer in left. Greg Gagne playing shortstop. And the only left-handed hitter in this lineup for Ray Miller, Randy Bush playing first base. Defensively, for the Minnesota Twins, Randy Bush will be at first base, Ron Washington at second, Greg Gagne at shortstop, and Gary Gaietti over third. The left fielder is Dave Meyer, the center fielder Kirby Puckett, Tom Bernaski playing out and right, and Tim Laudner behind the plate. Pitching for the Minnesota Twins, Kent Schramm, uh, Schramm making his 19th start for the Minnesota Ball Club. He has uh, five complete games. He's won eight and lost eight, and his ERA 5.05. Umpiring tonight, behind the plate will be Larry Young, Rick Reed at first base, Greg Kosk at second, and at third base, Tim McClellan, as we take a quick peek at Billy Martin, the Yankee skipper. Let's give you the scores this afternoon, the scores that Spencer Ross was talking about earlier. Oakland beat Toronto 5-1. Kansas City over Baltimore 7-5. California beat Boston 5-3. San Diego over Pittsburgh 4-2 in the National League. Met 16 at Atlanta 4 in the Slugfest. And uh, the Chicago Cubs edged the San Francisco Giants 2-1 in San Francisco. Right here, Game three just about ready to start, and here to tell you about it, Spencer Ross. And Ricky Henderson will step in, Bill. Ricky went 0 for 4 last night in the Yankees 6 4 victory over the Minnesota Twins. Henderson now hitting at 352. He is dropped back into second place in the American League batting race, five points behind George Brett. Now, the last time Schramm pitched against the Yankees, Henderson and Griffey. Had back-to-back -back home runs in the second inning. And Schramm took an early shower. Anderson with 13 doubles, four triples, 11 home runs, 37 RBIs, leads the league in stolen bases, second in batting average, leads the league in runs scored, 
third and slugging and on base percentage. And he takes ball one. Another good crowd on hand here. They had 37,000 last night. They're hoping to go over a million tomorrow. They may be on their way to the best year ever, Bill. Uh, they early. Yes, mm -hmm. it'll be the earliest they've gotten yeah. to uh, one million. Trump falls behind 2 and 0. Control has been his problem. He has walked 36 batters, struck out 43 in 108 innings. Not much of a uh, strikeout to walk ratio to write home about. He's outside with that one, 3 and 0. Laudner try to pull it back in. Ricky has walked 43 times this year. Second on the Yankees to Willie Randolph. Strike one. What makes Henderson so dangerous? You just can't lay that 3-0 uh, and 3-1 pitch in there. He'll hurt you. Mm -hmm. Three balls, two strikes to Henderson. Last night, the Twins got hurt with Don Baylor swinging on a 3-0 pitch and hitting a home run that wound up winning the ball game for the Yankees. A lot of leadoff men. You can uh, be behind and lay that ball in there. You know they're not going to hit the home run, but the Henderson, the fact they built, he has good power. 11 home runs this year. Count is now full, 3-2. I think Schraub's taking a lot of time here. If he walks Henderson, <laughs> then you'll see a lot of time. Well, everybody uh, gets a little nervous once Henderson gets to first base. Center field, long run for Kirby Puckett, and it is over the fence for a home run. Three and two pitch, and Ricky Henderson hits it to right center field. Puckett went back, and then I don't think he could quite believe it. Because it was over the wall, some 400 feet away, and the Yankees lead it 1-0. And, uh, hey, fans, you know what happens every time a Yankee hits a home run? Hey, Ricky Henderson, this bud for you. That was not a bad pitch. That ball was out over the plate, and it looked like it might have been out on the outside corner. It came back in a little bit, though. It came back in, and that's when Henderson hit it straight away center field for his 12th home run of the year. A lot of... 20 feet. 420. Yeah. A lot of power indeed. Ricky Henderson gives the Yankees a one to nothing lead. Will and history repeat, uh, that's Spencer? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it was Henderson and Griffey back to back shot at the stadium a couple of weeks ago. It will no foul ball. One and one. Randy Bush, who doesn't see much action in the field. Last night, uh, Stenhouse played first base. Ken Herbeck's shoulder still hurting. Look in the Yankee dugout. Bobby Meacham. Dan Pasqua. Count is one and one to Griffey, who had his 11 game hitting streak snapped last night. Two and one. Set for Ken Griffey. So Henderson homers, Griffey singles to center, and the Yankees have a runner on. Still nobody out here in the first inning. And here's Griffey waiting on the pitch and slaps it uh, just where it's pitched. It's pitched away, hits it into right center field. Ball really hustled to the outfield. It gets out there quickly and puck it. An ideal center fielder for this artificial surface. He's off at the crack of the bat. Here's Mattingly. Don Mattingly hitting now at 308. Leads the league in RBIs and in doubles. Had a triple and a single last night. Takes down low ball one. So Schramm getting into trouble right here. After losing to the Yankees, six to three. He got beat by Baltimore and then snapped a personal three game losing streak and beating the Tigers six to four. Down low, ball two, two and oh. Well, Mattingly's gonna make Schramm get the ball up. 
Strom looking in at home plate on by Larry Young. So far, Young has not given him that low pitch. And the Yankees haven't swung at it. Got it up there that time, Bill. Got it up higher. Strike one, two balls, one strike to Don Mattingly. Mattingly with 105 base hits this year. That's fifth in the American League. Griffey on at first. Throw came over a little bit high. At least, at least Bush was kind of taken aback by it, Bill. Two and one. Schramm doesn't have uh, that good a move toward first base. Outside, well, three and one. Griffey started then and slipped, and he was quite fortunate that he did slip because that pitch actually became a pitch out. He had started towards he had started towards second base and slipped and decided he better not uh, try it. Watch Griffey here. He'll start, slips there and stops. He's been a dead duck at mm -hmm. second base. Pitch came high and outside and a good pitch to throw on. Now three. he'll probably be moving. Three and one to Mattingly. Griffey is going, and Mattingly goes to left field. Foul ball. Count goes full, three and two. And a souvenir. And Griffey comes back to first. And he'll start again on this 3-2 pitch. Mattingly does not strike out that often. We saw last night he took a pitch. He took a call third strike for the first mm -hmm. time in quite a while. Ken Schramm getting into a bit of a hole here. Count is full. Three and two. There goes Griffey. And the pitch is fouled away again. So far this year, Spencer Mattingly has struck out 27 times. And he's been up... Uh, 344 times as we looked at the right hander Rick Lysander throwing early in the Minnesota bullpen. We're still in the first inning. Schramm has five complete games to his credit. This is 19th start. And Griffey is back. Count is full to Mattingly. In his last three starts, last four starts, he has not gone more than five and a third inning. And he's getting himself in trouble here. Griffey at first, three, two pitch. There goes Griffey. Ball is inside, ball four. And Mattingly walks. Griffey slid in. And there are now runners at first and second. We mentioned that we're talking about Mattingly getting the bat on the ball last year. He struck out only 33 times in 603 appearances. So he's ahead of that this year as the play is made at second base we look at Ray Miller the new manager of the Minnesota Twins we're sort of chuckling because the, the, the big prop up here now seems to be Miller chewing tobacco that's right <laughs> and he's trying to break that habit we saw him blow a bubble evidently uh, that was a front page story front page story Minnesota here in Minnesota who was uh, that lady uh, with the Cancer Society yeah, she's, uh, I believe, a pediatrician. She feels that uh, seeing the kid's heroes, so to speak. On smokeless tobacco, yeah. supposedly. Spitting juice. <laughs> well, the big story, too, is evident. They feel, at least, that uh, smokeless uh, tobacco, you can still uh, become uh, ill. Mm -hmm. Chewing, I guess. Is that yeah. what you call it? Ch chawing. 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 Dave Winfield, nobody out, runners at first and second, and he takes a strike. Winfield had a couple of singles last night, scored a run. And Sorry, it's a little funny to see Miller chewing bubble gum <laughs> instead of <laughs> tobacco. <laughs> Take a look at that shift. It's not as exaggerated tonight, Bill, as it was last night. Uh, tonight, the second baseman playing uh, to the right of the bag. Ron Washington at second tonight. Last night against both uh, Winfield and Baylor, they had the second baseman playing to the left of second base. Yeah. 
One and one to Winfield. Inside ball two. Winfield flirting with the 300 mark, hitting at 299. And Kent Schraub flirting with disaster here in the first inning. A little tough to continue to pitch from behind in this ballpark. Mm -hmm. You got to get ahead of the batters here. Got the inside corner, strike two. Two balls and two strikes. Made a visit to Dave Winfield's hometown today. St. Paul took a one of those old uh, Mississippi River paddle boats, uh, the old gambling boats, down the Mississippi to Fort Snelling. Amazing river. Sitting up here in Minnesota. At a big summer festival in St. Paul. He fouled away just to our right. And the count holds two and two. You don't like to miss a pitch like that. That was right there. You don't too often see a, a pitch right down the middle of the plate where you want it. You don't like to foul it back. Two and two to Winfield. Inside, ball three. Three and two. Nobody out. Runners at first and second. Yankees have scored once on a leadoff Ricky Henderson home run. And Ray Miller's chewing away, not chewing away tonight. That's Griffey in the bottom of your screen. He singled after Henderson's home run. Moved to second when Mattingly drew a base on balls. It might hold the runners here. Winfield has struck out 49 times. And they do just that. Winfield breaks the bat. He dropped it and hits it into the corner. Griffey will score. Mattingly will go to third. And Winfield will be in with a stand-up double. And the Yankees lead it by a score of two to nothing. That strength. He sort of threw that bat at the ball away from him and ripped it into the left field corner. We mentioned how fast this surface is. That ball jumped out into that left field corner at the 343 mark. Here it is again. Winfield. Way outside, loses a bat, but that's a line drive, a smash over Gaetti's head, and it'll go to the wall. Griffey scores easily. Mattingly will go on to third. Winfield at second base with his 54th run batted into the year, and that also brought uh, Ray Miller, the manager of the Minnesota Twins, out, and that's going to be all for Ken Strom. Here it is again. You see Winfield throwing the bat. And getting a double and a run batted in. Yankees now lead 2 nothing, and that's all for Ken Strong. He will not be charged with an inning pitch. And he's given up two runs. And the batting at third and Dave Winfield at second base are the responsibility of Ken Strong. So his ERA will go back up to around six. Make plans now to join the Yankees in saluting the scooter on Sunday, August 4th, when it'll be Phil Rizzuto Day at Yankee Stadium. The Yankees will honor Phil with pregame festivities and entertainment before the Yankees play the Chicago White Sox. The game will start at 2. And all fans in attendance will take home a commemorative Phil Rizzuto edition of Yankee Magazine. Compliments of Utoni. Good seats are on sale now, so make plans to be on hand to join the Yanks in saluting their greatest shortstop ever. Phil Rizzuto, Sunday, August 4th. I'll tell you, the scooter is missing some weekend here in Minnesota because last night, and I, I, I figure he's watching tonight, what he missed on television here, he missed a, an Eddie Dean, the singing cowboy movie from about the late 30s, and tonight's scooter, Lash LaRue, is on in the late show. And, and I know Lash LaRue is one of Scooter's favorites. <laughs> Lash LaRue uh, kind of talked a little like Humphrey Bogart. But he wore a, a cowboy outfit. And there's Ken Schraub. He's trying to figure out what happened. He'll yeah. get a chance to go look at some of those movies you're talking about early. <laughs> of course, he did, certainly did not want that to be the case. But Schraub pitched to four batters in the first inning. Gave up a leadoff home run to Ricky Anderson on a 3-2 pitch. 
A single to right center to Griffey. He walked Mattingly and then Winfield. Double in uh, Griffey. And we're looking at Rick Lysander. Lysander is making his 27th appearance for the Minnesota Twins. It's his 26th relief appearance. He's made one start. He's has no wins, two losses, and three saves. Spencer? Okay, and he will face Ron Hasse. This is third appearance against the Yankees. His one start came against the Yankees. That was the second game of that doubleheader at the stadium that the Yankees clobbered the Twins. 14 to 2. He lasted only two and a third innings, gave up four hits and five runs. This will score a run as Washington makes the play to Bush at first base. Give Hassey an RBI as Mattingly scores, and the Yankees lead it now by a score of three to nothing. That run to be charged to Ken Schramm. And Winfield moving over to third base. So the book is not yet closed on Ken Schramm. Don Baylor will step in now. Yankees lead it three nothing and they're still at bat here in the first inning. Fouled away strike one. Strike two as it's fouled at the plate. Now I was reading something about Dave Steve recently, where he was, you know, Steve was originally an outfielder in college and pitched very little. And he said, when you're pitching, you're reliant on the people behind you to make the plays. Well, the the reverse holds true. Uh, as you take a look at Ken Schramm, his fielders are relying on him to make the good pitches, <laughs> and you know it works both ways. Well, it's a team game, as you yeah. mentioned. Pitches outside to Baylor. One and two. Twins want to cut down this run, Spence. They, they've brought their uh, their infield, and I'd hate to play in on this. Song. You get killed yeah. playing it. <laughs> it's tough. One man away, and Baylor fouls it off his body again. Standing out there earlier, my son Jonathan, and he was bouncing a ball, and he's about five foot one. The ball was just normal bounce, Bill. Bounces over his head. Not with any velocity. Spongy, spongy. Mm -hmm. One and two to Baylor. Fouled out of play. Baylor's home run in the fifth inning last night in a 3-0 and pitch. Turned out to be the game winner for the Yankees. And a souvenir. Had some good fielders in the stands here in Minnesota. A couple of good plays tonight. Kid had a Yankee hat on. Mm -hmm. Well, I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of you see a lot of Yankee hats everywhere you go. Outside, ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Rick Lysander on in relief of Ken Schramm. We're still in the top half of the first inning. Winfield leading from third. And this one has popped up back out of play again. Baylor's home run last night gave him 62 RBIs. He is tied with Kirk Gibson for second place in the American League in that category. Fouled away again. A long at bat for Don Baylor. And a long top of the first for the New York Yankees. <laughs> Twins had won five of six and six of their last eight. Going in the last night's ball game. 
Good play by Gaetti as he holds Winfield and throws on to Bush for the second out. So the strategy works as Baylor bounces right to Gary Gaetti. We saw Gaetti make some excellent plays last night. Excellent third base. He'll come up here and he'll fake Winfield back. Make sure he stops and he makes a good strong throw of the first base. They had Baylor by plenty. Now the infield will go back for Randolph. Two men away. Randolph hitting a 288 with nine doubles, two triples, two home runs, 25 RBIs. Two for four last night. Doubled and scored a run and then had an RBI single. That's a ball, 1-0. I think Idry's been sitting on that bench quite a while. Might need a few extra uh, mm -hmm. throws. This top half of the first inning has taken nearly 25 minutes. Strike one. Randolph started the year slowly with the bat and then quickly turned it around. And has been up around 280, 290 for the last month and a half. They made a super defensive play last night. That's strike two. On a double by Dave Engel. Winfield hit Randolph. And Willie Randolph's perfect throw to third base cut down Engel. It's Winfield at third, two men away. Yankees have scored three times here in the first inning. Washington makes the good play, not a dime. The ball went bounce he bounce, and by the time Washington grabbed it, Randolph, scurrying down the line, has an infield hit. Winfield scores, and the Yankees lead it 4 nothing. A lot of English on this ball. Here it is again. Randolph hits on top of it. Now it'll get to Washington. Watch that bounce there. Washington has to go high, comes back down, sets throws. Randolph flying down the line, picks up a run batted in. His 26th of the year. So Here's that Babe Ruth. <laughs> Babe Ruth? Yeah. <laughs> Mike Pally Rule hit the ball in the upper deck. Here. Oh, that's right. Last night. What yeah. a shot. About 420, 430 feet away. Big home run for Pagliarulo. It gave the Yankees the early lead at two to nothing. Pagliarulo with seven home runs, 31 RBIs, and he takes a strike. Over his last 27 games, he has hit five of those home runs and driven in 15 runs. He's been hitting the ball, and, and his fielding shows it. He's been playing his position well. Sometimes a lack of the bat's going to hurt your fielding. Do you find that, Bill, when you start, no. start slumping? No, no. You, uh, it does happen the better with a lot players, of players. It happens to some players, not the better players. You never take a slump uh, out on the field with you. I think it might happen more with outfielders because they have a lot of time to sit out there and think mm. about what they've done wrong with the bat. You can't do that around the infield. If you hit them off with a ground ball, that'll wake you up. <laughs> Randolph on at first. There are two outs. The RBI by Randolph. That run charged to Ken Schramm. And that closes the book on him. He did not retire a batter. Gave up three hits and four runs. And walked the batter. Lysander came on after Winfield's double. Got Hasse and Baylor. But Randolph singled. Scored Dave Winfield. Well, Randolph wants time. Something might be up here. Night. He called time. They didn't give it to him. And uh, Willie Horton's upset. But first base umpire Rick Reed said, I didn't give you time. So they pick Randolph off. Weird way to end an inning. You saw Willie Randolph say, I want time out, and the first base umpire, Rick Reed, didn't give it to him. Billy Martin comes out to argue this. 
The Twins are already in the dugout. Well, as long as the umpire does not give you time, it's no time. So uh, there, that argument obviously will be lost. You can ask for time as uh, much as you want, but if uh, they don't give it to you, it's it's no time. So that's a that's a play. Randolph is out. So the side retired. The Yankees score four runs on four hits. And we'll take a look at it right here. Well, we mentioned Willie wanting time there, but the umpire has to say time. Reed did not do that, and he did not get time. Now, for some reason, he'll walk off. Now, watch him. He'll walk off here, and he'll get picked off. And then he'll start arguing again. Obviously, it's a pickoff. He's up. Okay, first half inning, four runs for the Yankees. The side retired, and the Twins are coming to bat. We'll step to the plate. You mentioned last night, Bill, uh, Ray Miller trying to utilize a lot of people on this ball club make them all feel they're part of the team and we're seeing good examples of it tonight Randy Bush playing first Ron Washington at second base of course uh, Ray Miller uh, probably taking a page out of the book of uh, Earl Weaver mm -hmm. he was pitching coach for, for Earl Weaver and I think one of the first things he said when he got here is that I want to use all 25 people as much as I can as often as I can this one fouled away strike one Washington has been to bat only 55 times with 11 hits Ron Guidry with a record of 12 and three there's a strike oh and two. Gidry in his last seven starts in 59 innings has an earned run average of 1.21. He's given up eight earned runs. Pagliarulo. Error will go to Pagliarulo as Mattingly try to make the scoop. And Pagliarulo upset with himself. Had plenty of time and just threw it low. Didn't follow through on the ball. He had plenty of time to follow through and the ball might have carried for him, but he didn't get much body behind it. Here's again a slider that Washington chops the Pally Rulo. Ball just goes down and Mattingly could not hold on to it. Oh, he got that back foot caught up through a sinker. Normally on this surface, the ball bounces true. The first baseman mm. has a good shot of catching the short hops. Here's Dave Engel. Engel, the designated hitter. And he takes ball one. Engel hitting at 304. He's been to bat only 46 times. Washington leads from first. This could be two. Meacham to Randolph. One double play. Six to four to three. The side retired. After one, it's the Yankees four and the Twins nothing. On that play at first base, and they tried to explain to Billy Martin what had happened. And right now, Rick Reed talked to Yankee first base coach Willie Horton about that same play. I think a lot of players think, uh, Spencer, that if they call time, then it's time. But, that, of course, I think they get used to that when they step away from the plate at home plate. They call it time normally, and for some reason, the umpires will give them time. But uh, that doesn't uh, happen all the time. The umpire has to, he's got, he's the one who controls time. Your time is his time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's Faldi Rulo to lead it off for the Yankees. He was at the plate when uh, Willie Randolph called time and wasn't given time and was picked off and Pagliarulo lashes a single to right field. The second base hit off Lysander and the Yankees picking up where they left off in the first inning when they scored four runs. Bobby Meacham will step in. Meacham hitting now at 234. 10 doubles, two triples, and 31 RBIs. Outside is Meacham. Shortened up to sacrifice. Leading 4 0, we might see Martin go from the sacrifice to the hit and run here. Or the run and hit.
Foul Yerulo on at first. Yankees with a four to nothing lead. And this pitch is fouled away. Pagliarulo is not going. And we've got some activity down in the bullpen, Bill. Well, a left-hander loosening up for the Minnesota Twins, Kurt Wardle. Rick Lysander on the mound. Let's see if the Yankees go back to the bunt right here. Count is one and one. And they do, and a good bunt by Meacham. It'll move Pagliarulo to second. And the throw over to Bush at first for the out. Good bunt by Bobby Meacham, and the sacrifice works. Well, normally on this surface, it's hard to bunt, but somehow Meacham got backspin on the bunt, didn't go too far. Goes out there and really bounces slowly, and there's only one play for Lysander as Bush got back to first base. And Meacham really got down the line. So we're back to the top of the Yankee order. Ricky Henderson. Schramm went behind him, 3-0. and oh, Then worked it to 3-2. and two. Then Henderson smashed a home run. The straightaway center field, 420 feet away to start the ball game. And the Yankees wound up scoring four times in the first inning. Strike one. Anderson hitting now at 354. Now George Brett started the day at 357. Kansas City had nine base hits today. Brett had at least one, a home run. Right field. Brunanski is there. Tagging up is Pagliarulo on his way to third, and he didn't slide. Base running mistake by Mike Pagliarulo. He did not slide into third base, and Bernanski with a perfect throw to double him up, 9-5. to five. The side retired. After an inning and a half, it's the Yankees four, and the Twins nothing. Well, Tom Bernanski picked up his seventh assist as he made a strong throw to third base, and Mike Pagliarulo forgot to slide when she was decoyed just a little bit by the third baseman, Gary Gaetti, and he was thrown out easily. Spencer? Okay, we go to the bottom of the second. You know what will remind you to slide? A little fine here there. A little fine will remind <laughs> anybody. Take some of your money. <laughs> And the man who made that throw, Bernanski, leads it off and takes ball one. You'll have guys sliding all over the place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As you said, though, and not making an excuse for Pagliarulo, that decoy, Gaetti just kind of stood there like the throw wasn't coming. But Gene Michael was. Gene Michael was on his knees. Him, slide, yep. and that's the man you got to listen to. Bernanski hitting a 263. Listen, the other guy, you beat Columbus. That's right. <laughs> Two balls, no strikes. Around the batting cage earlier today, Bernanski talking uh, with Ricky Henderson as Ricky walked away. He said, be quiet, Ricky. Be quiet tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and he hasn't been. Home run to lead off the ball game. There's a strike, three and one. Bernanski, a patient power hitter. He's walked 50 times. And, of course, a tough man to get a base on balls from Ron Guidry, who has walked only 19 men in 147 and a third inning. And now the count runs to three and two. When he beat Minnesota on July the 4th, Guidry struck out eight, did not walk a batter. Yankees won the game three to two. 3-2 pitch, deep to left field. Griffey in foul territory, makes the play. That ball hung up there, and there's one man away. First left the bat, Bill. Looked like it was going a heck of a lot further. And Griffey caught the ball uh, well shy of the wall in foul territory. So one man away. 
And Gary Gaetti steps in, as Bill mentioned, a couple of good defensive plays last night. And a good defensive play on that throw by Bernanski as he decoyed Pagliarulo, and Pagliarulo came in, standing up, and was tagged out. Strike one. Gaetti with 11 home runs, had only five in 1984. One and one. Fouled out of play. One ball, two strikes to Gary Gaetti. Yankees with a four to nothing lead close out this series tomorrow afternoon. Phil Necro looking to move a step closer to victory number 300. We'll go against the youngster from St. John's University, Frank Viola. Swung on and missed, strike three. So Guidry chalks up his first strikeout, and there are two men away. Kid took a little off the slider, the pitch before this, and Gaetti fouled it back. Then he just uh, reared back and put a little bit more on a fastball and struck him out. The catcher, Tim Laudner, will step in. Laudner's been to bat only 92 times. Takes a strike in those 92 at bats. He has struck out 30 times. Hitting a 217. Fouled away. And the count is 0 and 2. Good play by Tom Kelly, the third base coach. Picked up the carom. One and two pitch. This one hit to center field. Ricky Henderson is there. A one, two, three inning for Ron Guidry. Nothing across for the Twins through two innings of play. It's the Yankees four, Minnesota nothing. Here's Ken Griffey to lead it off for the Yankees, top of the third. What kind of club they have? <laughs> they had a good time. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how well they played, but they had a good time. <laughs> first pitch to Griffey is a strike. Griffey followed Henderson's home run in the first inning with a single to right. Had that 11-game hitting streak snapped last night, and he fouls this away 0-2. Yankees with four runs, five hits. Guidry has set the Twins down without a base hit through the first two. Outside, one and two. Rick Lysander on in relief of Kent Schraub, who pitched to only four batters in the first inning. Left field, Griffey goes with a pitch and hits it for a base hit. So Griffey is on, and Mattingly will come to the plate. Ball tailing away from Griffey. One hopper to Dave Meyer out in left field. Base hit. So here's Mattingly, who walked and came around to score the Yankees' third run. Yankees lead it by a score of four to nothing. Inside ball one. You played in Dallas. I, I know in Minneapolis, you played a little center field. Did you play any center field when you were in Dallas? No, they were smarter than the people <laughs> in Minneapolis. <laughs> one and zero oh to Mattingly. This could be two. Washington to Gagne for one double play. Four to six to three, and there are two men away here in the top of the third inning. 
Well, the one thing you don't worry about on the surface is a bad hop. Washington stays right there, makes a good hard throw to Gagne. He dances over Gidry for the double play. So two men away, Winfield will come in. Anheuser-Busch, Brewers of Budweiser and Michelob would like to remind you that the 1985 Hispanic World's Fair will be held at the New York Coliseum Friday, July 26th through Sunday, July 28th. See entertainment and examples of Hispanic cultures from throughout the world. Tickets are available at the New York Coliseum box office. Winfield takes a strike. Winfield doubled over Gaetti's head in the first inning. Drove home a run. And that was it for Ken Schramm, who did not retire any of the four batters that he faced. Strike two. Dave said, that's high. He said, I'm six, 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 seven, but that's a little bit too high in the strike zone. Of course, home plate umpire Larry Young said, no, it was right there. <laughs> Here it is again. Let's see how high or low or whatever. And it was outside, too. Well, Dave obviously a bit upset. <laughs> he heard him say strike. <laughs> what? Well, here's the Cohen two. Gagne at short. No runs ahead. The Yankees do not leave any batters via the double play route, and through two and a half, it's still four nothing New York. And Ron Guidry to face the bottom third of the Minnesota batting order: Dave Meyer, Greg Gagne, and Randy Bush. Twins had one base runner. Washington reached on an error by Pagliarulo in the first, but Engel then bounced into a double play. Strike one. Myers been to bat only 46 times, has one RBI, seven base hits, hitting at 152. Up high, one and one. Ron Guidry looking for his 13th win of the year. In his 12th straight. Popped up. Randolph. And he stays with it for the first out. And one thing we really have to mention here, there has not been any problem with any balls hit into the air, except Ron Hassey had some problems last night. I asked him about it, Bill. He said, you just can't see it. It just blends right in as soon as it comes up behind the plate. Well, I think what happens, as soon as the ball goes up, the catcher's got to spin around and find it. Mm. If you turn around after the ball goes up, uh, you're in a bit of trouble because Salas had no problem. No. But he got around right away, and, of course, uh, Hassey should go to school on uh, Salas. But the fielders haven't had any problems no. here. They, they, they've made corrections to those lights from early in the year. Strike one to Greg Gagne, the shortstop. The old-time wrestling fans might uh, question the pronunciation because back many years ago, there was not that many years ago, the before Hulk Hogan, <laughs> there was a guy named Vern Gagne who was the heavyweight champion wrestler. That slider out of the strike zone, slapped away by Hassey. Oh, and one to Gagne. Oh, and two. Well, it'll be interesting, Spencer's latter part of the season to see whether the hitters will figure Gidry out. Now they're probably going up still looking for that hard fastball that moves a little bit and that real hard slider, and he's throwing a couple other pitches plus some off-speed pitches. And it's a constant battle, pitcher and the hitter. Well, he threw the fastball there, and it's popped up. Mattingly has room, and he makes the catch. So two men away. But one thing about Guidry, he is getting ahead of the hitters. And that, that of course, is such a big edge. He has fallen behind only one batter in the first eight thus far tonight. And that was Bernanski went behind him 3-0, and oh, went to 3-2, and two, and then Bernanski flied out to Griffey. Here's Randy Bush, the first baseman. Made a base running error last night on a double. Tried to stretch it into a triple. Late in the ball game with his team down by two runs. 
And a perfect relay from Winfield to Randolph to Paulie Rulo cut him down. There's a strike. One and one. Bush is hitting at 237 with eight doubles, two triples, eight home runs, 20 RBIs. Two and one. Takes so much less out of your body to pitch like Gidry's pitching. Mm. Used to rear back, and every time he turned the ball loose, throw it as hard as he could, and he'd grunt. But now <laughs> this is a little easier. Just having fun. Runs the hitters crazy, too. You can strike a guy with a good pitch. He says, well, he's got good stuff. But then you get him out with junk. <laughs> he gets upset. At this stage of his career, though, he had to make these uh, alterations. I think so, and I think, uh, obviously, he's made them, and he's made those changes well. And made them quickly, really. The uh, transformation process took, took him, I guess, about a year before the realization came. Mattingly, he'll make it unassisted. And through three innings, the Twins are still looking for a base hit. Nothing across in the bottom of the third. Through three, it's the Yanks four, and the Twins nothing. Bill White with the Yankees leading it by a score of 4 nothing, Four runs, six hits, one error. The Twins with no runs, no hits, and no errors. The Yankees getting their runs in the first inning when they knock Kent Schramm out. Ricky Henderson led it off with a home run. Griffey singled, Mattingly walked, Winfield double home a run. And then Ron Hassey's ground ball scored the third run as we look at Dennis Rasmussen in the Yankee dugout. And Willie Randolph single made it 4 nothing. And it'll be Hasse, Baylor, and Willie Randolph here against Rick Lysander in the top of the fourth inning. Bill? All right, Spencer. Hasse drove in a run with a bounce out in that first inning. It was Hasse's 14th run batted in this year. He's doing a lot of catching against right-handers. And Hasse takes a strike. Two strikes on Ron Hassey. They try to keep the ball in on Hassey. And the count's 0 2. Yankees four runs, six hits. Minnesota Twins, no runs, no base hits. You know, early in the year, Bill, remember we yanked the Yankees went to Texas. And Billy Martin put Hassey in a ball game to hit against Charlie Huff. And he had a big ball game, four RBIs. But uh, not until Butch Weiniger got hurt did this transpire. And Ron Washington, the second baseman, throws out Hassey for the first out. Well, there's one down here in the fourth inning, and the batter will be uh, Don Baylor. We look at this play again. Hassey goes down for that pitch, and Washington with the easy play to first base. During uh, Weiniger's absence, Hassey showed that, that he could hit the ball and hit it consistently. Baylor has been up once, bounced to third, and that's foul of third. Gene Michael had to get down. Ball kicks back in fair territory. So there's no balls and a strike on Baylor. Don hit his 16th home run last night. And as Spencer mentioned earlier, it was a difference in the ball game as the Yankees won by two. A ball and a strike on Baylor. I saw something in the paper today I couldn't believe. They're going to kick Keith Hernandez out of a ball game. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. If he doesn't get the left foot uh, back in fair territory. There seemed to be a lot of, I've heard a lot of talk about it. That's never been called since I've been around baseball. The rule book does say, The rule though, book says everybody's got to be within fair ground. Mm -hmm. But it's never, that's one thing that's never called. And he First does thing they do, Spencer, correlation, something that uh, might correlate with that is the uh, catcher's box. First thing you do when you come out from the uh, dugout, you wipe that out. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to do that either. No. Nope. <laughs> Once again, Gaetti with a good play at third base, and there are two outs. Every left-handed first baseman I know puts that uh, left foot in foul territory, so all they've got to do is drop the ball down. He gets mm -hmm. a tag down quick, and I've never heard it called. I did it 14 years. Apparently, somebody uh, made somebody a mention of it, and it got looked at, and the rule book says, but it's one of those rules that is just been disregarded for so many years and now no somebody's getting technical yeah Willie Randolph high chopper to short Gagney's there 
That'll retire the side. An easy inning for Rick Lysander. Three ground ball outs. And at the end of three and a half innings of play, the Yankees four, Twins nothing. He's a big part of the Yankee legend. The Da Vinci of the double play. Gore Rizzuto must be a saint. Schooner is one of a kind, I hope. Holy cow, it's Phil Rizzuto Day. A big day for a little huckleberry like that. Phil who? Sunday, August 4th at 2 p.m. against the Chicago White Sox. It's Phil Rizzuto Day. Be there when the Yankees pay tribute to one of their greatest heroes. I think he was born wearing pinstripes, but they were tiny ones. This bud's for everybody who sets them up just so they can knock them down. They're league bowlers, and they know that when you join a league, you get rolling. The competition, the excitement with good times to spare. You find it all in the leagues at your local bowling center. And league bowlers can compete in the Budweiser Hall of Fame tournament coming this winter. So join a league and get rolling. For all you do, this bud's for you. She told me no one would get killed. What the hell do you want anyway? Oh, oh. Steve McQueen and Ally McGraw, two bank robbers on the run. The Getaway, tonight at midnight on Channel 11. Participating advertisers of New York Yankee baseball are Burger King. Come on in and try the big beefy taste of Burger King's new Whopper sandwich. Count Edison serving New York and Westchester, and by Canon, so advanced, Canon is the world's leader in 35 millimeter photography. We go to the fourth inning. Yankees holding on to a four to nothing lead over the Minnesota Twins, and back to the top part of the Minnesota order with Kirby Puckett, Ron Washington, and Dave Engel to face Ron Guidry. Bill? All right, Spencer. Puckett bounces short his first time up, and he'll do it again if Meacham hurries. And there's one down. Puckett uh, hitting on the first pitch, bouncing out six to three. And there's one down. Guidry has pitched to the minimum amount of twins. That's a double play in the first. Here it is again. Well, here's Meacham has to hurry that throw because Puckett can get down the line and a good arm shown by Meacham for the first out. Ron Washington, he got on on an error, throwing error, charged to Mike Pagliarulo in the first inning. Over Pack's edge, game's first base hit for the Twins, and Washington will go for two, and he'll make it. He's got good speed. And the ball just bounced over Pagliarulo's head. So the Twins have their first base into the ball game. And their second base runner as we watch it again. Just hit right at the plate. And you see where Pagliarulo was playing. Even with the right-handed hitter up. Here's Pagliarulo. Playing short of the bag. And the ball bounces over his head. So Washington is on at second, and the Twins have their first runner in scoring position. We have one out here on the top of the fourth, and Dave Engel stepping in. Engel grounded into a double play in the first inning. He's 0 for 1. That slider's low, ball one. Yankees leading 4 0. They have four runs on six hits. The Twins, no runs, and. The double by Ron Washington, their first base hit. Gidry had retired eight in a row before Washington's base hit. 2-0 and on Engel. Hits well against left-handers. Did not get much playing time with Billy Gardner, but Ray Miller has used him more. Batting at 298 now with three home runs, six runs batted in. That'll hook foul down the left side. Two and one. Brunetsky in the background getting some practice cuts in. 
For the count, two balls, one strike on Dave Engel. Ron Guidry. That's a fair ball in the corner. Washington will score. Engel will go for two. And the throws off line as Randolph got hung up with second base umpire Greg Koss. But Don Mattingly alertly backed up. The Yankees now lead four to one. Back to back doubles, angles, a clean line drive as we watch it again. Washington will score easily. Ball hits about eight feet inside the line. Griffey has to make a complete pirouette, his throw off the line, and watch Willie Randolph here as he bangs into Greg Cost, the second base umpire. But fortunately for the Yankees, Don Mattingly was right behind to pick up the ball. The Twins on the board, it's 4 1 now. And Bernanski steps in. Bernanski uh, fouled to Griffey down the left field line his first time up. He's over one. And the pitch is a strike on Brunanski. 19 home runs, 57 runs batted in for the Minnesota Twins this year. One and one. Bruno Brunanski. He's on his way to his best year ever. Popped up. And a broken bat. Don Mattingly taking charge for out number two. How much those bats cost now? About $8 a piece? I would think so. Well, Brunaski just broke his favorite bat. How about that pop-up? Watch it here. Takes the big cut. The bat breaks. No, broke oh, right there. Oh, that's where it <laughs> broke it. Okay. <laughs> he acts as though it was the bat's fault. <laughs> so there are two outs. Engel still at second base. The batter is Gary Gaetti, who struck out on a high fastball in the second inning. Engel still at second base. Yankees still leading now, four to one. Strike one on Gaetti. We understand from the Elias Sports Bureau that George Brett went two for four today, so he's batting just a point under 360. Henderson so far one for two. He's probably around 353. Two strikes on Gaetti. Kidry goes through that routine. Back behind the mound, 10, 12 feet. Talks to himself a bit and comes back. You ever see Al Roboski? Oh, yeah. Well, that, that was <laughs> that was an, exagger uh, an exaggerated version of this. Struck him out again. Kidry strikes out Gaetti for the second time in the ball game. That'll retire the side. A run on two hits. The man left. We played four. And the Yankees lead Minnesota 4-1. We're moving to the fifth inning here at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota, with the Yankees leading the Twins by a score of 4-1. to one. Ron Guidry looking for his 13th win of the year. Rick Lysander came on in the first inning for the Twins after the Yankees scored four. Tony O, talking about hitters, Tony Oliva, now a first base coach for the Minnesota Twins. And, uh... Look at uh, some of the twin fans in attendance here tonight. Is Tony looking up there? Paddy <laughs> Rulo to lead it off for the Yankees as we go to the fifth of this 4-1 game. Bill? And Paddy Rulo uh, single to right field in the second, but was cut down trying to go from second to third on a fly ball to right by Ricky Henderson. Bags is one for one in the game. Now batting an even 230. Hit his seventh home run last night under the upper deck here. Went over 420 feet. That's foul off first base. Lysander has had the Yankees hitting the ball on the ground. 
after relieving Ken Schramm, will have the Yankees hitting the ball in the air. There's been only one outfield put out since Lysander came on. That is to left field and Dave Meyer for the put out. One away. We're playing Paliulo well over into left center, and Meyer had a long run, but he ran it down. A lot of people working at the ballpark. Photographer's cage, one of the TV cameras. Here's Bobby Meacham, sacrificed in the second inning, so he has not been at bat officially yet. He sacrificed packs on a second base. Now he tries to bunt for a base hit, and they'll have him. Ball stayed right out in front of the plate for Tim Laudner. Two Me outs. Meacham last time laid down a perfect sacrifice bunt as he dragged the ball down the first baseline. This time, he had the same idea, and he pushed it. And it just didn't get enough spin on it to head forward. An easy play for Laudner, but Meacham down that line pretty quickly, but there are two men away. And that'll bring up Ricky Anderson. Anderson hit his 12th home run of the year, leading off the ball game on a 3-2 pitch in the first inning. Then fly to right field in the second. Paliudo tagging at third, trying to tagging at second, trying to go to third. He was decoyed by Gary Gaetti, who tagged him out. Henderson now at 353, six points behind George Brett. Brett at 359. Gaetti, a balance for the third out. No runs, no hits, nobody left. We're going to the bottom of the fifth. The Yankees four, the Twins one. Let's pause for station identification. Compliments of Enkelon. Good seats are on sale for the White Sox series. Enkelon Yankee tote bag day on the third. And of course, the fourth, it's Phil Rizzuto day at Yankee Stadium. Phil? All right, Spencer and Tim Laudner takes high. Ball one leading off against Gidry. We're in the fifth inning. The Yankees four, the Twins one. Laudner's been up once and fly to Henderson in center field. Two and oh. Twins got their first base hit and their first run off Gidry last inning. A double by Ron Washington and then a double by Dave Engel driving in Washington. Saying before, there, there's Gidry taking that walk back behind the mound. R Rabowski, though, he really was talking to people. You couldn't see him. I couldn't see him. But they were there <laughs> when he took that walk. Demons. <laughs> yeah, whatever. 3-0. and oh. And he got the green light on a 3-0. and oh, And that's a home run for Tim Laudner. His fifth home run of the year. Just over the fence at the 3.43 mark in the left field corner. Yankees now lead 4-2. And kind of a deja vu. You saw it last night. 3-0. Don Baylor got the green light and just hit one just about into the same exact spot in the left field for a two-run home run. And this time on 3-0, it's Tim Laudner. Stepping into this one. Hit it on the line and just over that 343-foot sign to make it a 4-2 game. Dave Meyer has just popped the Randolph for the first out. And there's one down. That home run, by the way, by Lautner, his fifth. And that'll bring up Greg Gagne, the shortstop, who fouled automatically in the third inning. Yankees now lead 4-2 over Minnesota. That's foul. The 14th home run given up this year by Ron Guidry. Bill Necro has given up 15. Joe Cowley, 14. Ed Whitson, 10. And Dennis Rasmussen, 9. A ball and a strike on Greg Gagne. Ed 
into shallow right center. Winfield and Winfield as Henderson <laughs> decides to give way. Two down. I wonder if there's any correlation between uh, home runs given up and hit batters. Yankee pitchers have hit seven this year. And give it up know, now 83 home runs. I know the point you're making. No, I'm I, not I making a know. point. Oh. I'm just looking oh. at the stats because they're right next to each other. <laughs> Here's Randy Bush, and he takes a strike. Might there be fewer home runs if there were more hit batsmen? Well, the, the stats are right next to each other. Home runs and oh. hit batters. <laughs> and that's a caught by Bobby Meacham. A looper to shallow left. Meacham ran it down for the third off. One run on the home run by Tim Laudner. And at the end of five innings of play, the Yankees four, Twins two. And we'll watch it again. Good play by Meacham. 4-2 Yankees after five. As the Twins finally getting some base hits off Ryan Guidry who had no hit them through the first three and a third innings. A couple of doubles in the fourth by Washington and Engel producing a run and then on a three and oh pitch Tim Laudner's home run makes this a 4 2 ball game. Look at some of this crowd here. We haven't gotten an attendance figure yet. There were thirty seven thousand on hand last night and I'd say the number will be in that area for this evening's ball game. There were forty three thousand for the opening game on Thursday afternoon for the Yankees it'll be Ken Griffey Don Mattingly and Dave Winfield to face Rick Lysander in a 4 2 game Bill. All right Spencer Griffey two for two in the game both his base hit singles and Lysander has done an excellent job of holding the Yankees in check since he came on in that first inning. Griffey takes the ball. You mentioned he's kept the ball down and thrown a lot of ground balls. All four runs charged to the starter, Ken Schramm. Two balls, no strikes on Griffey. Three and oh. Griffey now at two sixty one. That's Kurt Wardle, the left-hander, heating up in the Minnesota bullpen. And that's way outside, ball four, Griffey walks. That's the first walk given up by Lysander. So Griffey's been on base all three times uh, so far in this game with two singles and a walk. Lysander has not pitched more and two and a third innings this year except for one six inning outing and he just may be getting tired here. He went six innings against Milwaukee on June 1st since then. Nothing more than two and two thirds innings. And that may be it for him. He pitched very well. Gave up no runs. Three hits. That's the first walk. He has surrendered. So Kurt Wardle will come in from the bullpen. And while the pitching change is being made let's take time out along the Yankee Baseball Network for the following message. He went back, looked like he might be able to catch the ball, and all of a sudden it just took off, and it's a home run for Don Mattingly on the first pitch. Mattingly, stint home run of the year, is 71st and 72nd runs batted in. Yankees now lead 6-2. And folks, you know what happens every time a Yankee hits a home run. Hey, Don Mattingly, this buzz for you. First pitch from Kurt Wardle. Right over the plate, Mattingly steps into it and hits it. And Bernanski turned around like he would have a play, but none at all. That's way up there. Yeah, way back there, and the Yankees now lead it by a score of six to two. And the batter's Dave Winfield. That ball went 407 feet, according to the instant measures here at the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome. Dave Winfield, one for two in the game, and that's a ball. So Lysander. Goes five innings, give up, uh, gives up one run on three hits. Walked one. 
Let's see if Gaetti has room here off third base. Nope, it'll be in the seats, two rows. A ball and a strike on Dave Winfield. Until I walked to Griffey, Lysander had retired eight straight Yankees. Good performance by Lysander, but uh, Ken Schramm, the starter, just didn't have it tonight. As he left, uh, just before he left Spencer, he looked at his uh, mm. fingers. I wonder if he had to leave because of uh, a blister that was developing on his uh, right hand. And Miller wasted no time going mm. to get him after he walked Griffey on four pitches. One and two on Winfield. The Yankees have not played particularly well here in the Kingdom. They've won 10, lost 12 against the Twins here. And 11 of the last 14 games played here in Minnesota. Two and two on Dave Winfield. Field getting good hacks at the left hander, Kurt Wardle. Mattingly's run will be charged to Wardle. The run scored by Griffey, charged to Rick Lysen. Here's the big cut by Dave Winfield, and the ball just fouled straight back. Change up got him. A lot of motion, took a little off the ball. Winfield down on strikes for the first out. Kurt Wardle registers his first out here. That ball dropped down a whole bunch. And Winfield with no opportunity at it. So there are, is now one man out. And Ron Hassey batting. He's been up twice, bounced to second both times. And a base hit against the left-hander. And Hassey will hold it first with a single. Ron bounced to second in the first inning and drove in a run. Well, Hassey continues to hit the ball. And he likes the offering from the left-hander. Just straight over the center of the plate. And a clean base hit for Ron Hassey. You know, Bill, we go back to that ball game at the stadium in which the Yankees battle back for 8-0. And while it was only one game at the time, we said it's the kind of game that can help turn the team around. And it did, to an extent, turn the Yankees around. It turned the Twins down. And uh, the game that followed was the one in which the Yankees came from behind again. And Ken Griffey had a grand slam home run off Kurt Wardle in that game. And Minnesota Billy Gardner's twins just really never recovered from that uh, situation at those two ball games. Watch this here as Baylor most definitely did go around and a good call. One and one on Baylor. There's that change curve. Same pitch he struck out Winfield. One and two. So Wardle changing speeds well. Twins get a, another right-hander up in their bullpen. And throwing. Hassett first. Of course, he's not a threat to steal. There's one out. Two and two on Don Baylor. Curve missing. Three and two. to dive back in on that snap throw the first. <laughs> Horton. Look, you're not going anywhere, I don't think, so don't get picked <laughs> off. Three and two on Baylor. threw that one away. Let's see, Randy Bush. Look at Randy Bush's foot. Mm -hmm. Well, he's on the line. That's fine. And Baylor goes down on strikes on a 3-2 change. And they're 
two outs with Hassey still at first base. So Wardle picks up his second strikeout. And again, that change is just dropped down. Change Bottom curve. just falls out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he ran off a batter, ran off a single in a run, and bounced to short. He's one for two in the game. Yankees leading by a score of six to four. Don Mattingly's two-run home run here in the sixth off reliever Kurt Wardle. Check that six to two. Yankees six, Twins two, straight away center field. And the center fielder, Bucket. Two runs on two hits, the man left. After five and a half innings of play, the Yankees six, the Twins two. The sixth inning, 6-2 six New York, and here's Bill. All right, Spencer Puckett's been out twice, and both times he's bounced to Bobby Meacham at short, and here he takes the ball. Puckett batting 275. He's 4 for 11 so far in the series against the Yankees. One and one. Gave you some scores earlier, ball games that have already been played. The Blue Jays lost to Oakland 5-1. So as of now, the Yankees two games behind the Toronto Blue Jays in the race for first in the American League East. Tim Burtz has won his sixth. Former Yankee farm had six and two. Turn it into a fine young pitcher for the Oakland A's. Dave Steve lost it. He's nine and six. Three and one on Puckett. See Paglia Rulo playing rather short, but Puckett is always a threat to bunt, no matter what the score of the ball game. Base hit for Kirby Puckett. Went right back up the middle. And Puckett had some ideas and drew a through a throw from Ricky Henderson in center field. Watch it again. Guidry, as good a fielder as he is, just has to duck for cover on this one. As Puckett lines it straight back up the middle, and then Henderson bobbles the ball momentarily. And Puckett, after making the big turn, returns to first base. Ron Washington, who got the uh, Twins first base at a double, a chopping double over Palio's head in the fourth inning. Ball one. Kansas City beat Baltimore seven to five. Jackson the winner, Flanagan the loser. Flanagan coming off surgery to repair a torn Achilles tendon. <laughs> Seven and a half games behind, but with all the changes they've made, Bill, they, they could give a run in the second. Well, they're half. always tough uh, going down the wire. One ball, one strike on Ron Washington. California beat Boston five to three. Whip the winner. Oh, he to the loser. At yeah, thirty-three thousand Fenway Park. In the National League, San Diego beat Pittsburgh 4 to 2. <laughs> Steve Kemp, a home run and a losing cause for the Pirates. That's out of play. 36,000 in San Diego. Rich Gossage picked up his 20th save. The Mets trounce Atlanta 16 to 4. A couple of home runs by Daryl Strawberry. His ninth and tenth. Well, good races uh, in every division in baseball. Only one that's uh, got any margin of distance is the American League West. California now five and a half up on Oakland with the A's winning today. One and two on Washington. Lifted to left field. And over in left center now, Ricky Henderson in front of Griffey for the first out. 
And finally, the Cubs edge San Francisco two to one. Each team uh, just four base hits. Dick Ruthman over Atley Hammock. 15,000 for the afternoon game in San Francisco. Dave Engel. He's grounded into a double play and double in a run. One for two in the game. Yankees leading six to two in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Popped up. Randolph. Two outs. He's fouled out and popped out. He's 0 for 2 in the ball game. Yankees so far done a pretty good job with this fella. Mm -hmm. He's 1 for 8 now in the series. And he takes the ball inside. I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, Bernanski, his first at bat, 3 and 0. And then Gidry battled back to 3 and 2. On the home run, hit on the 3 0 pitch. That's the first time I've seen somebody swing at a 3 0 from Gidry this year. Well, there are very few hitters will get the green light, but here I think you can, you can give uh, Greg Gagne the green light on 3 0. He <laughs> might be able to hit one out. Pitcher's got to be a little more careful here on 3 0 than in another ballpark, perhaps. That slider's a strike. Two balls and a strike on Brunanski. 19 home runs for Brunanski. 57 runs batted in. He's a 262 hitter. That'll be a foul ball. Bucket was moving on the pitch, and the ball hooked foul down the left side. A bucket will have to go back to first base, and it's two and two on Brunanski. And he got a pretty good jump as we see Puckett taking off towards second base. And he'll have to come back as Brunanski steps back in. I think Brunanski might have broken his bat. Didn't sound like it. field and Ken Griffey looking up in the air and the side is retired no runs a base hit and the man left on base we played six on the Eastern Airlines scoreboard the score the Yankees six the Twins two sitting in here is Spencer Ross okay Bill Talia Rulo will lead it off for New York one for two single in the second inning and then fly to left. Tags guilty of a base running mistake. Mm -hmm. After singling, he moved to second on Meacham's sacrifice. And then when Ricky Henderson lined out to Bernanski and right, he tagged up, went to third. And Gary Gaetti decoyed him. Pagliarulo didn't slide. And Gaetti put the tag on him. He'll slide next time. Well, he might have checked out Ricky Henderson uh, last night or mm -hmm. a couple nights ago. Maybe they don't like to slide on this surface. Playing inside, you figure you just ought to stand up, not get dirty. Well, there's dirt there, though. Down around the base areas. Outside corner for a strike. Three and one to Faliarulo. Kurt Wardle on a relief of Rick Lysander. Came on after Lysander walked Griffey to wa start the sixth. And in the first pitch, Don Mattingly hit a two-run homer. Good fastball there, three and two. Interesting that uh, Billy Martin, late in the ball game now, with the opportunity to make changes in the left-right situation, Paulie Rulo stays in. Ron Hassey stays in. And Paulie Rulo draws a walk. Where they're leading, and you never can tell what might happen with the lead, and uh, you keep those people on a bench, you can use them in case you have to later in the game. 
So Paglia Rulo walks. That's the first walk issued by Wardle, who after giving up the home run to Mattingly, struck out two men in the sixth inning. Bobby Meachum sacrificed his first at bat, and this time he tries it again, but he pops it up. And Wardle is there to make the play. So Meacham sacrificed his first at bat, then tried to bunt for a base hit in the fifth and was thrown out by the pitcher Lysander. And here the little pop up to the pitcher Wardle. This time bunting from the right side, got under the ball. So Paglia Rulo remains at first, and we go back to the top of the order in Ricky Henderson. Henderson let off the ball game with a 3-2 pitch, home run, straightaway center field. Then line to right in the play in which Paglia Rulo was doubled up at third. And then on a check swing, bounced out to third baseman Gary Gaetti. So Henderson one for three. Takes a strike. Six runs, eight hits for the Yankees. One run, two runs, four hits for the Twins. Got the inside corner, 0 oh and 2. Ricky Henderson didn't think so. inside one and two Anderson just got back out of the way of that one ball two strikes to Henderson with one out here in the top of the seventh inning Yankees lead six two now Henderson looked back in that second call strike and there seems to be a lot of controversy this year. How wide is that plate, Bill? Like? 17 inches. It's supposed to be. Seems to be getting a little bit wider on both sides. You know, whatever the team, whatever the call. Well, it's the inside National League uh, protector. You look inside and guess outside. I've, all, I've always felt. This one fouled right back off the chest protector of Tim Laudner. And the count holds one and two to Ricky Henderson. And when you umpire on one knee, it's awfully hard, uh, I think, to umpire high-low. You're down, but you have to guess not only on a pitch away, but also on the height of the pitch. Now watch Larry Young get hide inside. He'll hide behind the catcher and get down on one knee. Anderson hits this to center field. Puckett cannot get it. Paglia Rulo will have to hold it second. So Ricky Henderson is on with his second base hit of the ball game. And the Yankees have runners at first and second. Well, oh, Henderson gets out. jammed here, Spencer. Ball sliding in, just gets under it. A little tantalizing fly ball into center field. Paglia Rulo decides to uh, hold at second base. We mentioned that the uh, center fielder, Kirby Puckett, has 14 assists this year. Led the American League last year when he had 16. And here we are, a little bit past the midway point. Ken Griffey takes strike one. Oh, it's hard to lead an assist two years in a row. The second year, the guy say, hey, he can throw. Let's play it safe. Let's run him one base at a time. They apparently are not yet convinced about young Kirby Puckett. Outside, one ball, one strike. You feel the umpires, the catchers can cheat a little more with the umps looking in, cheating the respect of bringing the ball back quickly toward a position where they'd like it to be. This could be two right here. Gagne did not double him up as Griffey gets down the line. Fourth play, four to six. And Henderson is retired. 
And they're now two men away. Here it is again. Ron Washington up with the ball. He'll go to second to Gagne. Henderson gets a good run at Gagne. Makes him uh, take an extra step to get out of the way. And obviously Griffey beats the relay back to first base. So Griffey is on. Henderson retired. And Fadio Rulo moves over to third. And Tim Laudner out at the mound to talk to the left-hander, Kurt Wardle. Getting back to what I was saying to you before that uh, ground ball. Is it easier with the umpire peering in over the shoulder for a catcher to bring the ball back to where he would like it to be toward over the plate? Well, I don't really think it, it makes much difference because the, the angle is tough for the uh, for the umpire. As Johnny Padres goes out, and he'll talk to Wardle. Uh, they want to talk about the first pitch to Mattingly. Mattingly jumped on uh, Wardle's first pitch uh, in the sixth inning and hit a home run, a two-run run, a two-run home run. So they're worried about that first pitch, and we might see that change curve here. But I think uh, it, uh, catcher really doesn't have to cheat because the umpire is looking at that outside pitch on an angle, and we've seen uh, a lot of pitches that look like uh, they might be outside call strikes on both teams. It's just the angle they're looking at, rather than being directly over the uh, catcher and looking inside outside. They're they're looking from the inside, looking out, and they have to guess on that pitch away. And there's that curve ball. Yep. They decided to throw him a breaking ball instead of a fastball. Mattingly jumped in that fastball, and uh, this time that changed curve. As we look at Griffey at first, Pagliarulo at third, two men out. Yankees lead 6-2, batting here on the top of the seventh inning. That got the outside corner, one and one. A home run for Don Mattingly, his 10th of the year, his 71st and 72nd RBIs. Mattingly one for two goes to left center field that'll be up the gap and it could score two runs Greffy is rounding third he'll come in to score Mattingly will hold with a double two run score give Mattingly 74 RBIs to increase his league lead in that category and his 28th double of the year he also leads the American League in that department and here it is again. That's a fastball up, and Mattingly rips it into left center field, and once it hits its artificial surface, it'll take off. Look at it bounce. It'll go to the wall. Pagliarulo scoring easily. Fuck it up with the ball. And Griffey will score. And that's going to be all for Mr. Wardle. We're going to get right-hander Mark Brown to come on and pitch to Dave Winfield as the Yankees now lead by six. A big night for Don Mattingly. Started off the game with a walk, scored a run, then bounced into a double play, but he liked Kurt Wardle. Home run for two runs and a two-run double. So four RBIs for Mattingly. And 74 on the season, 28 doubles. And his batting average up now over 310. And Mark Brown will come on for Kurt Wardle here in the seventh inning. As Ray Miller checks the availability of his people on his lineup card. Well, the Cleveland Indians will be at the stadium for a three-game series Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, August 6th, 7th, and 8th. Highlighted by another summer giveaway. All fans 14 and under at the Yankee-Cleveland Indian game on Wednesday afternoon, August 7th. We'll take home a free Yankee thermos. Compliments of Delwood. Good seats are on sale now for all three Indian games. So make plans and remember Delwood Yankee Thermos Day on Wednesday afternoon, August 7th, when the Yankees and the Indians meet at 1 o'clock. Oh, Mark Brown uh, relieving Kurt Wardle, who came on in the sixth inning, went one and two thirds innings. And uh, he gave up three runs on four hits, including the two-run home run and the two-run double uh, to Don Mattingly. Wardle struck out two and walked one. Now Brown pitching to Dave Winfield, Spencer. Winfield, one for three. Doubled home run in the first, bounced to short, and then struck out swinging. Brown making his fourth appearance of the year. He's pitched only seven innings, given up 13 hits, nine earned runs, and an earned run average of 11.57. 
Winfield still at that 299 mark. Fastball for a strike. 0 and 1. Yankees with an 8 to 2 lead as we play at the top of the seventh. Mattingly down at second. Strike two. Yankees came up with four runs in the first inning and knocked Ken Schramm out. Rick Lysander pitched five innings, pitched well, gave up three hits, but after walking Griffey in the sixth, he left. And Mattingly greeted Wardle with a two-run homer. One and two now to Winfield. They got the big shift on on Dave Winfield with the second baseman Washington playing to the left of second base. Good play by the catcher Tim Laudner. Two balls and two strikes. Two men out. Top of the seventh. Yankees eight. Twins two. Ron Guidry's limited the Twins to four hits. Ball was uh, tipped away into the dugout. <laughs> and Winfield uh, lost the bat. Is that Mike's missing with the bat looking at it? Winfield lost his bat back in the first inning. But that time he lined a double over Gaetti's head. Bat and ball go toward the Minnesota dugout. Fouled away. Count holds two and two. This big road trip for the Yankees, their longest of the season. It's on to Kansas City, then to Texas next weekend, and it finishes up in Cleveland. These are the kind of games, Bill, that a contender has to win, the majority of them. Well, they're the playing the West, and uh, it's a big plus because they played so well this year against the West. Tipped it, strike three, so the side retired. Yankees get two more runs on two base hits. They leave one through six and a half, New York eight, Minnesota two. Bottom of the seventh inning here at the Metrodome in Minneapolis with the Yankees leading it by a score of eight to two. And Rod Guidry will pitch to Gary Gaetti, Tim Laudner, and Dave Meyer. Gaetti has struck out swinging twice. He has struck out 56 times this year. That's tops on the twins and waves at this one. Strike one. One and one. Gaetti struck out 81 times last year. Brought it down from 121 the year before. At this pace, he will be at about the 100 mark or a little bit over this year. Fouled away, one and two. Billy Martin has a lawn chair out there. Billy made a good play in that ground ball. <laughs> and a good play by Tom Kelly down at third base. We saw, we, we saw Bernanski wearing sunglasses. Kelly's wearing them. <laughs> Ron Guidry. An 8-2 lead as we play the bottom of the seventh. 
Goodry looking for his 13th win of the year, his 12th in a row. Strike three, gets Gaetti for a third straight time. And there's one man out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Gaetti's the only guy Goodry's fan in this ballgame. Here it is again, a fastball that, that a little bit slider that rolled over on the outside part of the plate. Caught uh, Gaetti looking. Well, here's Tim Laudner. He hits this one to left field, but Griffey is there. And there are two men away. Two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. Texas beat Detroit last night, two to one. And tonight the ball game's in the 11th inning. And they're tied at four and four as the Tigers could wind up this evening three games behind the Yankees should the Yankees hold on and Texas wind up winning that ball game ball one now to Dave Meyer Myers 0 for 2 popping up to Randolph on both occasions this one fouled straight back and the count is one and one Five, ball two. Two balls, one strike to Dave Meyer with two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. The Yankees got four in the first. Knock Kent Schramm out. Ricky Henderson had a home run. And a two more in the sixth on Don Mattingly's home run. And two more in the seventh on Mattingly's two-run double. Three and one to Meyer. And Guidry has walked his first batter. Comes with two outs here in the seventh inning and a 3-1 pitch. And with two outs, Greg Gagne will come on. Gidry did not walk a batter in his last outing against Texas and now goes six and two thirds here. Strike one to Gagne. Gagne's 0 for 2. Right center field. Winfield moves over. Side retired, no runs, no hits. Twins leave one through seven, eight two Yankees. Ron Hassey, Don Baylor, and Willie Randolph to face Mark Anthony Brown. A New Englander. A New Englander. Lives in North Walpole, New Hampshire. Born in uh, Bellows Falls, Vermont. Strike one. Came over in spring training from the Baltimore Oriole organization. Hassey, one for three. Got an RBI in the first inning and a ground ball a second. And then singled in the sixth. Gaetti can't make the play. Gagne can. And they got him. Good reaction by Gagne as the ball bounced away from Gaetti and he saves Gaetti in error. <laughs> Here's Hassey slicing the ball and it's got a lot of English and it took him a long time to get away from home plate. Yeah. <laughs> and also it took him a long time to get down the first baseline. Don Baylor takes ball one. Five, six, three if you're scoring that one. On the out. That's down low. 2 0 oh to Baylor, who's looking for his first base hit. Gaetti robbed him in the fourth inning. Also bounced out to third in the first and then struck out. This is Gagne. Two men away here in the eighth.
Kind of interesting, uh, Mark Brown. Oriole property, Ray Miller's the pitching coach. And uh, they took Brown on their trip to Japan last year. Came back, got rid of him. And now he's pitching for the former pitching coach of the team that apparently didn't want him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's probably why he's here, though. Mm -hmm. Orioles have always had uh, good pitching. Willie Randolph takes strike one. You mentioned Flanagan coming yeah. back from Achilles uh, surgery lost today. He's 0 and 1. So he certainly if he comes back and gets in good shape will not hurt the Oriole pitching staff. Outside one and one to Randolph Randolph. Had an infield single in the first inning which drove home the fourth run of inning number one. And bounced to short and fly to center. So he is one for three inside. Two balls, one strike to Randolph. Two outs here in the eighth. Eight to New York. Three and one. Strike two, three balls, two strikes to Willie Randolph. Brown made nine appearances for the Orioles last year. Pitched a total of 23 innings and had an earned run average of 3.91. Three and two, and he walks him. First walk given up by Brown, who came on with two outs in the seventh inning and struck out Winfield. And it'll bring up Mike Pagliarulo. Ray Miller. Getting his baptism as a manager in the big leagues. It's a tough job. Yep. If you're not winning. <laughs> Momentary delay here. I don't know what Law Laudner is pointing out towards center field. They want the second base umpire to move, and Cosk will move from the second base side, a second to the first base, uh, to the third base side, or the shortstop side. Inside for a ball to Pagliarulo, who was one for two, single in the second. And also drew a walk in the seventh inning and came on to score. Outside. 2 0. It'll be Phil Necro tomorrow afternoon against Frank Viola. And we'll be on at 2 p.m. New York time. It's 1 o'clock here in Minnesota. Inside. 3 0. So Brown having some control problems here. Walks Randolph and now goes behind 3-0 to Pagliarulo. That'll be out of play. Got to get a better swing than that on a 3-0 fastball. You shouldn't be hitting that ball the other way. You got to be pulling that thing. You look for the fastball and if you don't get it you take it but you get a better rip than that. If you're going to swing at three and zero, if you, we've seen a lot of that tonight. Yeah. That's strike two. Last night we saw Baylor hit one for a home run. Tonight, a home run by the Twins. Tim Laudner on a three and zero pitch. And here we see Pagliarulo do it. Inside corner, strike three called. Side retired, no runs. The Yankees leave one through seven and a half. It's 8 2 New York. Fouls the first pitch off. Bottom of the eighth, Yankees with an 8 2 lead. Bush is 0 for 2. Bobby Meacham made a super play on a looping line drive over short the last time Bush was up. 
and took a base hit away from Well, the crowd tonight just about the same as last night, a little more than 37,000, nearly 38,000, 37,919. So the Twins are hoping to go over a million tomorrow afternoon for the finale of this series. One and two to Randy Bush. Ron Guidry, who faced the minimum nine batters through the first three innings tonight and gave up back-to-back -back doubles to Washington and Engel in the fourth for a run and a leadoff homer to Tim Laudner in the fifth for the other run for the Minnesota Twins. Four hits for Minnesota. One and two. Ball two. Two balls, two strikes. Well, Detroit and Texas remain tied. They're now in the 12th inning at four and four. Toronto beaten this afternoon by Oakland. Gidry. Good defensive play. And the first out here in the eighth inning. He stays with the ball. The center fielder Kirby. And with one man away, we'll go to the top of the Minnesota order in Kirby Puckett. Oakland with a 5-1 win over Toronto. So the Blue Jays are now 54-37. If the Yankees hold on and win this, they'll be 51-37. A game and a half behind, tied in the loss column. Strike one. Puckett's one for three. Singling is last at bat up the middle. Down low, one and one. Two men away. Last base hit the Twins got was the leadoff single by Puckett in the sixth inning. I think Meacham likes his surface. No bad hops on it. Oh. <laughs> Gets a good jump on the ball here. I think most infielders would, would like it, Bill. You know where the ball the ball's coming at you. It comes at you true. Comes at you fast and true. Ron Washington swings and misses. Strike one. Only thing we've seen the infielders have problems with here is the high bouncers. Yeah. And uh, that, they're not going to get errors on those. It's going to be about 12 foot six <laughs> in order to get up and grab them. Outside. The example Washington at the plate. The first base hit of the ball game. He bounced one toward third. Hit it right in front of the plate, and it went way over Pagliarulo's head. Pagliarulo. Side retired. One, two, three inning for Guidry. Nothing across. Through eight. It's the Yankees eight and the Twins two. Phil will be greeting him in Kansas City this week. When he returns, Meacham leading it off here in the ninth inning. 0 for 2 with a sacrifice. Ron Washington at second base. And there's one man away for the Yankees. So that last little hop to Washington, that's what we've been talking about. For some reason, gets to the... Watch him, he'll have to get up off his feet there to catch that last hop. I don't think he really had to do it then, but you worry so much that you have to do that, it becomes a reflexive action, I think, around the infield. Washington in at second base tonight for Tim Tuffle. And with one out, Ricky Henderson, who's had a two for four night, including a home run, 
to lead off the ball game on a 3 2 pitch he stroked it center field 420 feet away then single to center in the seventh little looping pop fly strike one from Mike Brown Yankees with ten hits the twins with four Dodgers are leading the Cardinals two to nothing in the fourth inning should the Cardinals lose that game the Mets would be half a game out of first place Dodgers coming to play tonight with San Diego winning this afternoon all even with the Padres so it's really heating up in the National League East and West and also in the American League East for the Yankees looking to move a game and a half behind the first place Toronto Blue Jays. And I'll tell you one of the one of the great things about growing up in New York was the possibility of a subway series the rivalry and we're legitimately seeing it right here this year in 1985 for the first time in 30 years. Some of the most vivid memories of baseball in New York City. One and two to Ricky Henderson. Down low, ball two, two and two. ball three balls two strikes to Henderson one out here in the ninth Yankees with an eight to two lead and Ricky Henderson has his third base hit of the game as we mentioned he came into this game trailing George Brett Brett had two hits today went up to 359 and here's Henderson again that third base hit should move him uh, close to 356 he was batting at 354 before he got that base hit so he should move uh, to within three points of uh, George Brett Ken Griffey who is two for three couple of runs scored and a walk ball gets away from Laudner and Henderson moves down to second base. I have to wait for a ruling on that. But Henderson in scoring position now. They called it a pass ball on Tim Laudner. There's a strike, one and one. Griffey had that 11 game hitting streak snapped last night, and he started off tonight's ball game with back to back singles. Second base, that's the shortstop, excuse me, Gagney, and he throws him out. They were shifting over on Griffey. Henderson moves down to third with two men out, and Don Mattingly will come to the plate. So Griffey is retired. And Mattingly will step in after walking in the first and scoring, then bouncing into a double play. Mattingly hit Kurt Wardle's first pitch for a two run homer in the sixth and then doubled off Wardle to left center field in the seventh inning driving home two more runs. So his 10th homer he now has 74 RBIs and 28 doubles. Leads the American League in doubles and ribbies and takes ball one.
of his four RBIs tonight, none of them scored Ricky Henderson. And 28 of his RBIs have played at Henderson, who leads the American League in runs scored. Nice to have a Ricky Henderson <laughs> in front of you. Yeah. It looked like they might be trying to make Mattingly go after a bad pitch with uh, Winfield up next. Got the inside corner, two and one. Two balls, two strikes, two and two to Mattingly with two men out. Here in the ninth inning, Mark Brown. Here's the last pitch to Mattingly from Mark Brown. Ball tailed back in. Mattingly thought it might have been inside. Back live, this pitch is fouled. And the count holds two and two. Yankees lost the opener of the series on Thursday afternoon on Ken Herbeck's Grand Slam. Here's Washington playing in short right field and throwing out Mattingly to retire the side. No runs ahead. The Yankees lead one. We go to the bottom of the ninth with New York leading at eight to two. Up against Ron Guidry, who is three outs away from his 12th straight win. And a base hit to left field. Only the fifth hit given up by Guidry and the first since the sixth inning. Since then, Guidry had retired the Twins in order except for a two-out walk to Dave Meyer in the seventh inning. I think Guidry probably feels that the uh, Twins might be taking a pitch since they're down six runs, but Engel jumps on the first fastball and slaps to the left for a single. That's Engel's second base hit of the night. He doubled and drove home a run in the fourth inning. And here's Tom Brunanski. Guidry has handled him. Brunanski is 0 for 3. And takes a strike. Well, just in case, the Yankees have Brian Fisher getting loose in their bullpen. This one is hit to left center field. Ricky Henderson waves off Griffey, and there's one man away. Guidry. Face nine batters over the first three innings. As we look at Henderson, who's had a three hit night, including a home run in the first inning. Talia Rulo made an error in the first, but was erased on a. Washington was erased on a double play. And there were back to back doubles in the fourth for a run, a homer by Laudner in the fifth for the other run. Gary Gaietti has had a tough night. Guidry has recorded all three of his strikeouts against the Twins third baseman. He has walked three. He has struck out one. He has walked one and struck out three. This one foul back. One and one. Some pitchers just they give you trouble. You can't pick up the ball. And of course the old saying you can't hit what you can't see. Uh, Guidry just at least tonight has uh, Gaetti's number. I don't know overall in the three or four years he's faced Gaetti what the percentages are. But from the looks of things tonight, I don't think Gaetti's hit uh, Guidry that well. He is struggling up there. One and two. himself a base hit after striking out three times and Angle will move over to third base so with one man out the Twins have put runners at the corners here in the ninth inning and Gaetti has kind of a half smile at his base up to say it's about time well he gets this one out on the end of the bat 
Didn't really get a good rip, but it laid it out into left center field. Got a nice hop. That allowed Engel to go on to third base. So first and third with one out, and Tim Laudner will step in. I was thinking back to something Lou Pinello mentioned to me at the beginning of the year after, I forget who it was, struck out four times. He said, striking out four times in the game is rougher than getting four hits. <laughs> it's... it's <laughs> <laughs> Tim Laudner. He pops this one up. Willie Randolph. And there are two men away. So Laudner, who had homered on a 3 0 pitch back in the fifth inning, is retired for the second out. That's interesting, though. Striking out four times tougher than going, getting four hits. <laughs> well, I don't know what it means, but I've yeah. done it. <laughs> And it's frustrating. Well, you had more four hit games than four strikeout games. Uh, so it must well, have been tougher. Let's see, I don't know about <laughs> that. <laughs> Dave Meyer steps in. In fact, the guy who did it still pitching. Sutton. Hmm. And still pitching well. Griffey. He short hops it. And the run scores. And it is now an eight to three game. Griffey was uh, caught twixt in between, and then finally when he came on, he was able to just short hop it and a run scores. And Meyer getting his first base hit, a fastball over the middle of the plate and down. And obviously short hop by Ken Griffey. And fortunately for Griffey, he was able to short hop it. That ball gets by, another run would have scored. Uh, Dave Rigetti joins Brian Fisher in the Yankee bullpen. Greg Gagne, the shortstop, steps in. The Tigers and the Rangers are now in the 13th inning, tied at four and four. There's Rigetti throwing and Brian Fisher on the right of your screen. Billy Martin, Mark Connor, the Yankee pitching coach alongside. Fouled away. Twins have scored a run here in the ninth on three base hits. And the Yankees with an eight to three lead. And Gidry trying to finish up and come up with his eighth complete game of the year. He's had four in his last seven. Trying to make it five of eight. Gaetti down at second. Meyer on at first. Right field, long run for Dave Winfield. He puts it away. The side retired, and the ball game over. For the Twins here in the ninth inning, they add a run on three base sets. No Yankee errors. Two men left on base, and Rod Guidry has won his 13th. And the Yankees come away with an 8-3 win. Bill? Yankees, 8 runs, 11 hits, 1 error. The uh, Twins, 3 runs, 7 hits. They also uh, they played airless baseball. Gidry, 13-3, the winner. Ken Schramm, 8-9, the loser. 12 straight for Gidry. His eighth complete game. The Yankees now just one and a half games behind uh, the Toronto Blue Jays. Final score once again, Yankees, 8, Twins, 3. That's it from the Metrodome here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Remember to tune in tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock when the Yankees once again meet the Minnesota Twins and we'll have it for you right here along the Yankee Baseball Network.